finally arrived at our destination. I'm about to go in here and get some wine tasting. This one I tasted. Yes. yes. So we're going drier to sweeter. This is currently my driest. The Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, it says lightly oaked on the sign here, but to be honest with you, I can't say that I taste so much oak in it. Okay. And with the Chardonnay being we generally do it in stainless and put some barrel stage down in it, so it's not actually in an oak barrel. Like it's in a stainless plant. tank. Okay. Put some put some wood planks down in there to kind of give it a little bit of oak, but it's not super oaky. And, it's typically kind of a dual-edged sword with the Chardonnay. I'll get folks that want it as oaky as you can get it, and then I'll also get folks that don't want the oak. So it's kind of one of those that not necessarily appealing to all the folks that typically would like the Chardonnay if they like it super oaky. But yeah. super well, yeah, oaky. Okay. I'm gonna, gonna rinse these between okay. flavors here as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This next one it's called Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc. White on white on white. That's it. Uses white Saval on, Blanc on, grapes. Those are a French hybrid that we grow about seven acres of. Got about a 30 acre vineyard in the next county, so about 45 miles northeast of here. That's probably where you spoke to them this morning. Yeah. We are the only folks in Gatlinburg growing any of our own grapes. So They're the, the others, only people in Gatlinburg yeah. growing their own grapes, so you should stop here. All the others, all the others use local product because they yeah. contract with local farmers to grow for them, but we are the yeah. only ones doing everything ourselves from start to finish. Wow. I feel like this one is nice on its own with a little bit of orange juice. This would make a really nice mimosa. So this is more like a champagne type? You can't call them that unless they're made in that region in France, so we have to stick with either a sparkling or a bubbly. We could technically get sued I if... Oh, uh, too late to go. We could potentially get sued if we call it a champagne. We're, so. we're, we're, we are we don't we do not work for winery. We call it champagne because it was very... Ultimately, it's just a carbonated top. wine. Same situation, wine. but... Carbonated wine. Bubbly. I didn't realize how big of a deal that was until I started working with the wineries. And yeah, if we call that a champagne... Yeah, yeah you're in trouble. Yeah, we could potentially get in trouble for that. That's crazy. Wow. You could just the labels themselves. I never realized how particular they are with the labels. Wow. So the difference between it's supposed to say alcoholic and saying alcohol instead, that could potentially get us in trouble too. Oh, so, that's crazy. Yeah, it's one of those that we just try to jump through the hoops and fall in line where we need to. But. Mm -hmm. So what are we drinking now? So this is the first of the semi-sweets, and this one is the lesser sweet of the two. This is the one that I kind of consider our most middle of the road between the sweet and dry. It's called Snapdragon. It uses orange muscat grapes. I think floral Moscato flavor, but minus a lot of the sweetness you get with the Moscato. I feel like that one is probably our most middle of the road. I'll take another shot up. I feel like that one leans to the drier side a little bit. My other semi leans a little to the sweeter side. This next one is probably going to be the most familiar flavor to you. Moving on up. It's called Lost Guy. I like this that one. one. I like that one though. That's pretty good. And this one here is the same grape that Welch's uses for their grape juice and jelly, so hey. probably the most familiar flavor. Welch's. Comically pouring this wine into these actual communion cups. I get at least yeah. a few folks each day that tell me if I had some, had some right. wafers, they feel like they were taking communion samples. this one. But be giving us Jesus juice. <laughs> I actually had some <laughs> just turned 21 <laughs> referring to that wine as the Jesus juice a couple of weeks back. I said, no, I get it. If you attend a church that uses wine, it probably is a Concord wine. Now listen, so. I was at a church and the wine was so good. Let me get one more though, man. I know. Put one more though, I man. was at, a, um, and the wine was so good, I asked the priest what it was, and he really did take the bottle out, okay? And he showed it to us, and he it had a cross on it. I was so Thank embarrassed. You. Oh, wow. I thought it was something maybe that I could pick up like right, at the right. local wine store. And he was like, no, it really comes from like a dispensary. Wow. I was like, oh my goodness. I was embarrassed, but it was the best wine I'd ever had in my life. I told some kids the other day, I said, if you've never had Concord grape juice, I think I feel bad for your childhood, because I felt wow. like that was kind of a staple for anybody that grew up in the States, but yeah. I did make a mistake a few months back and had a couple oh. from India that spoke such good English, they had Carolina IDs, I assumed they were born here, and I typically yeah. described that one as just a little less sweet Welsh juice, so the gentleman of the couple yeah, was the one that like actually stopped me, and he's like, now what is this Welsh juice you're talking about? <laughs> I had to explain that whole situation, but store, yeah. it was funny after he tried it, he's like, I didn't recognize that Welch's name, that meant nothing to me, but I recognized that flavor. I definitely had some for grape juice. So. Wow. Ultimately, it worked out, but I just yeah. felt bad because I thought for sure they were from here, their English was so good. But. <laughs> you said, what is this Welch's? Right? 
So this is the first of the sweet ones, so the least sweet of them. It's called Good Water Raz. Good Water Raz. This is the one I consider Good the sneaky one. Good Water Raz. So you had 12% alcohol in the comp four that you had last. This one's got 12% too. I just don't feel like I taste 12%. This one is 12%? Yes, ma'am. So my friend, her name is Tiffany. She's from Cincinnati. She would like, she shops by percent. And the higher kind, she said, is the better kind. I just feel kind. like as smooth as this is for 12%. For that's, you. that's probably the bottle I could turn up. Not that I plan to do that or even recommend it, but I think it'd be real easy to do. Oh. Yeah, she would like that. So like that one's really nice on its own with a little bit of dark chocolate, even better. And then the semi-sweet nature of the dark chocolate seems to work well with the sharpness. Mm -hmm. I'll drink that by itself, the whole I'll bottle. Really, really. I feel like I could turn that one up. Put a straw in a little bit of ice. <laughs> so we got its, its counterpart, the Good Water Black, or Blackberry next. Okay. Both those two look like reds, but they're actually white Catawba grapes. Raspberry is flavored with raspberry concentrate. This one with blackberry juice. Oh, this okay. is another 12 percenter that I actually do feel 12%. like I taste 12 percent in. Okay. The majority of ours are in that 12 percent neighborhood, but a little sweeter than the Raz, maybe a little more tart because it's got blackberry. I mix all of them together. <laughs> I just mix them together. I feel like with wine in particular, y'all, it's so subjective to each person's taste. Everybody is so different that nobody's wrong. It's all about what tastes good to you. But it's so weird. I like the cinnamon sweet time for it. Like now that we're moving on. Yeah, I don't like yeah. the dry, dry wines. Yeah. I will say, I feel bad for the dry fans up here just because there's so little to be had versus all the sweet. Because we don't like it. You know? Like you buy what the people want. I had some dry folks in here earlier and I said, guys, we've got to produce what the people want. And if I did nothing but dry wines, I'd probably be out of business pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. Oh, yeah. yep, you got to so make what the people demand. We're so. drinking double. So this is double reactionary. This double is reactionary. reactionary. Double there's reactionary. Blueberry and blueberry. There's blueberry. no grapes in this one. So okay. Blueberry and what's wine. What's the percentage on this? This one's our lowest, actually. It's ten point two. Ten point two. Sweetness up front from the blueberry, tartness of the blackberry, a little more on the back end. So another one that I think would be good with some chocolate. I like that too. I like that mix. I don't feel like there's any of them that we're producing currently, but I'm just adamantly against. But I'm yeah. kind of middle of the road myself. I feel like the sweeter ones nowadays, as I'm getting a little bit older, just mean headache tomorrow if I have too much fun with yes. sweet ones. So I try to be mindful of that. It's not worth being. Being rough the next day. Do you know what cheese go with the sweet wine? What would be better? It all just depends on what you like. You know, most of the sweet wines, they do say cheese is something that is often paired with those. On most of our bottles, we've got some pairing ideas. Oh, okay, so that's nice. This one is the peach. It says okay. salad, root vegetables, and cheese. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead and open up the bottle. I'll show you the peach. Take that to the head, man. That was probably my top seller because everything's it is my peachy, sweet. but it's all gone. So we do feel like we're a little conservatively sweet compared to a lot of places in town. Yeah. Uh, tell people all the time my sweet ones are still sweet. They're just not diabetes in the glass sweetness like a couple of them out there. Yeah. But it's weird because like sweet. when we come to Gatlinburg, we don't really associate um, Gatlinburg with wine. We normally it's this is like our first wine tasting ever. Well, wine's kind of the thing that happened first in Gatlinburg. Yeah. Moonshine was shortly thereafter. Okay. Uh, then you started seeing some whiskey. Old Smokey's got their whiskey place yeah. across the street there. And then cider, I guess, is the newest thing. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big IPAs beer or cider person, though. I don't know. It's the carbonated mm. alcohol. I like the, the one that we were talking about. Yeah. Champagne. Carbonated alcohol, for whatever reason, just gives me terrible heartburn. I can do a single glass and I'm fine, but about halfway through a second one, I just start getting terrible heartburn. At least I'm aware of it. But. Take two different sips on this one, y'all. Sip one is like you picked up a peach and just bit into the peach fuzz. A little bit of tartness, a little bit of acidity. Sip number two, sweetens up a little bit, almost like you're getting back to the flesh of the peach. But that's the white catawba grape that was in the raspberry and the blackberry, but also the Niagara yeah. grape. Not Flavored like with that. peach juice, that was 11% alcohol. Okay. 11. So I guess the only ones that are different, the majority of them are 12, you know. Now, are, are you from here? I am not originally from here. No. Oh, also, yeah, you don't sound like them. I was actually talking to some folks about that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately. Because I was going to ask you to say 11, but you're going to sound like me. I had some I had some folks in here earlier that told me exactly that. You're, you don't sound like you're from here. Where are you from? I said I was born in California, but I've lived here since I was four. But I was talking to them about how my grandmother, when I would call and talk to her in California, she would just crack up and act like I was the biggest hillbilly she'd ever met. I said, I don't think it was the accent, because I really don't have that southern drawl so much. But I said, the words that I use that she's not familiar with hearing, y'all yeah. is my go-to. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. anytime I'd say that, she'd be like, oh, you sound like the biggest hillbilly I've ever met. <laughs> So you still have family on the West Coast? I do, in the Central Valley. Yeah. 
Yeah, my mom's sister and got three cousins still out there as well. Now y'all on this one, this is the one that I specifically saved for last of the wines because it's the strongest one. If you take three different sips on it, I feel like you get three different tastes. This is like pork, pork. Sip number All one, is one sip. it's the strong brandy, so you get the brandy right up front, letting you know it's 18 and a half percent. But if you, if you take the multiple sips on it, I feel like each sip you take, yeah. the brandy's mellowing, the flavor of the fruit is coming through more. On this one, I just try to keep folks from knocking it back like a shot because I feel like you miss all the flavor and only get the brandy if you oh, knock damn. it back. But, but, yeah. but as sweet as it is and as strong as it is, y'all, I typically tell you people, take a little sip, you have too much sip. fun with that one, that might be the one that makes for the rough next day. I'm drink but. my drink. I'm trying to share. I'm trying to help him. <laughs> you know, man, I'm a sip, sip or a shot. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Now, what's your favorite, husband? The last yeah, one's called as well. The last one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's talk to the people, Hester. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we enjoyed the wine tasting here at Good Water in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we decided to get one of the wines, and what did we get? We got double raspberry. Double, double reaction. reaction. Double reaction, yeah. which is blueberry and raspberry together. It's really, yes. really good. Yeah, so yes. we out here. Make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe, leave some comments. Yeah, also follow Good Water Winery on social media. Thank you. And these lunches is great. That's what I'll be enjoying that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we periodically switch up the flavors, I guess, with spring break starting next week. And if you're looking for this spot, it's like ducked off in the alley. You might see that coming in, but you have to come in from this way from the street. That's where we came from. We kept on missing it. But yeah, good place.